So our next speaker is Supreet uh, Venkatesh. He's a staff, staff system architect at ARM, and he'll be talking to us today about server-based manageability guide for uh, SBSA compliant ARM servers. Thanks, Jonathan. Hi, uh, welcome to the session on server-based manageability guide for SPSA compliant uh, ARM servers. I'm Supreet Venkatesh. Uh, I work as a system architect at ARM. Uh, I also uh, I'm also part of uh, OpenBMC TSC, as well as uh, I represent ARM at uh, DMTF uh, work group, PMCI work group, as well as uh, I am the maintainer of uh, UFI SCD uh, and represent ARM at uh, UFI forum as well. So the agenda for today is uh, we'll discuss what was the need or why the need for a server-based manageability guide for uh, server-based system architecture, uh, compliant DOM servers. And we'll uh, briefly go through the history of uh, what other specifications that existed. Uh, and we will uh, uh, introduce you to the uh, uh, server-based manageability guide as well. Then we'll discuss, uh, uh, we have a motto at ARM that uh, we don't uh, write specification uh, without uh, validation. Uh, so we'll explain uh, how we will uh, upstream features or reference implementations uh, using OpenBMC. And then finally, uh, we have a, a roadmap or a plan uh, to accomplish that, I'll discuss that with you. Uh, and finally, the actions that we need to take uh, in order for us to be successful. Okay, so why do we need a server-based manageability guide? Uh, it's basically because uh, without it, our ecosystem partners would have point solutions uh, that would lead to fragmentation. So our goal is to kind of standardize the common manageability capabilities uh, with scope for flexible customization, uh, which can add value to the end user. Uh, the main goal or the objective of this specification is to leverage the industry standard specifications, uh, including uh, Redfish, uh, PLDM, uh, MCDP, as well as uh, IPMI, as well as leverage the hardware management specifications and designs as defined by the Open Compute Project. So, uh, so ARM uh, is pretty new uh, into the server market. Uh, so, the first thing ARM came up with is a server base system architecture specification. It basically defines the hardware requirements for the platform to be called as a uh, ARM server. It standardizes the, standardizes the uh, key aspects of the system architecture and as well as the processor elements. Uh, this is a public specification and it's available in the uh, ARM website. Uh, once we have the hardware requirements, uh, the next uh, logical step for us was to define the software requirements for the platform to be called as a ARM64 uh, server. So uh, server-based boot requirements uh, kind of caters to it. Uh, it basically defines the boot and runtime services ex expected by a enterprise platform uh, enterprise platform operating system or hypervisor to boot out of the box. So this is loosely based on UEFI, SMBIOS, and ICPI specifications. So there are several different levels of uh, compliances uh, uh, on server-based system architecture. So in order to validate the compliance level uh, we do have uh, architecture compliance uh, suite. Uh, 
which kinds uh, which uh, which has uh, tests which test against SBCA and SBBR specifications. Uh, this is open source and is available uh, in GitHub. Uh, this is built on top of uh, Linux UFI validation operating system. Uh, it basically has uh, SVPR uh, set of uh, tests, which is part of uh, UFI self-certification tests, as well as uh, uh, there is a SPSA component, which is a UFI shell application. Uh, which runs and which tests the SPSA portion of the requirements. Other than the firmware uh, side of requirements, uh, the interface between the operating system and the uh, firmware uh, to test that, uh, there is a set of uh, test suites, uh, SBR, SBBR, uh, which is part of a firmware test suite, which kind of uh, uh, is also open source. And there is a SPSA uh, test suite which, which is built into the Linux UFI validation operating system. And uh, that tests the SPSA specification. So this was a brief history of uh, what specification we had uh, uh, in the server space. So the next logical step for us is to kind of uh, come up with a manageability specification, uh, which basically uh, defines uh, uh, what sort of manageability features that needs to be uh, implemented in, uh, in a platform that should be called as ARM server. Uh, so this is currently under development uh, in conjunction with uh, partners across the industry. SVMG is being developed in ARM server AC community. So it's all public process. It's similar to any other standard bodies. Uh, if there is an engineering change request that needs to be uh, raised, uh, any one of you can raise that uh, against the uh, Mantis, which we have. Uh, to get the access to the Mantis database, uh, you can send an email to ARM server AC and uh, uh, we could uh, create an account for you. So with SBMG, uh, we have uh, three different compliance levels, basically M0, M1, and M2. Uh, these compliance levels are based on, uh, so our use case is typically you are used to kind of uh, having an ARM-based BMC. Uh, communicating with an x86-based uh, server or a power server. So in our case, it's uh, ARM-based BMC communicating with an ARM-based uh, host or an SOC. Uh, so currently, uh, the criteria for the compliance levels are uh, the interfaces that are there between the SOC-based host and the BMC. And then uh, interface that is there between the BMC and the platform elements. And uh, uh, what is the interface to the BMC itself? Uh, and the interface between the BMC and the IO devices, basically the network controller, storage controller, or any other IO devices that you may have. So. Currently, we are at level M0. I mean, our ecosystem, our partners are at level M0. It's all implementation defined. Uh, with level M1, uh, we want to kind of uh, go with the BMC management services interface. That is the interface to the BMC. Uh, we plan to support both Threadfish uh, as well as IPMI. Uh, the host interface itself, uh, uh, there should be, uh, I mean, uh, there should be uh, IPMI-based uh, SSIF and uh, Redfish uh, host interface. Uh, currently, IPMI-based host interface, uh, we can't use uh, KCS or uh, uh, BT 
or uh, any other any other LPC mechanism because the ARM-based uh, SOC host doesn't have any of those interfaces. So SSIF is uh, kind of the one which we can use for now. So rest of uh, uh, the interfaces are implementation defined at this point for level M1. For level M2, uh, we kind of have uh, SOC to BMC interface. It says implementation defined here, but uh, we kind of plan to use uh, MCTP or uh, SMBus as an uh, interface between the service management controller and the BMC. Uh, for the BMC to platform elements, basically to uh, different sensors on the board are connected to this SOC. Uh, we plan to use Redfish, PLDM, uh, MCTP. And for the BMC management services interface, uh, it's the same as uh, level M1, which is either Redfish uh, as well as IPMI. Host interface is same as uh, level M1. And uh, for BMC to IO device, uh, we plan to have a uh, uh, follow the NCSI uh, specification, which is based off of uh, DMTF forum. So uh, we kind of uh, want to accelerate the development of uh, the specification. So with that intention in mind, uh, three different sub teams were formed. Uh, one was uh, in conjunction with our partners. One was the uh, reliability, availability, serviceability team, uh, basically the RAS. Uh, then the other one was the platform uh, monitoring and control team. And the third one was the remote debug team. So these are the features which we plan to kind of uh, uh, present a design proposal uh, soon uh, to the uh, open bmc so ras sub team is basically uh, concentrating on uh, creating an uh, interface requirements for ras errors we plan to leverage uh, common platform error records or cper records which are defined in ufi specification uh we i mean one of the key requirements there is we cannot use uh, system event log because it's uh, just 16 bytes long and uh, uh, the requirement is to kind of have more information uh, in the log so that it's useful for the administrator to uh, debug the uh, debug any of the uh, ras errors As well as uh, one of the uh, goals for, of this sub team is to inject uh, RAS hardware errors. So I guess uh, the figure isn't visible, uh, but I can explain it. Uh, so uh, basically, the RAS errors uh, in our uh, architecture it's kind of generated. Uh, once it's generated in the application processor, uh, it kind of can create a C per error record on the, uh, I mean, there are two different approaches to handle uh, RAS events. One is called the firmware first approach and the other is the kernel first approach. Uh, in the firmware first approach, uh, it's the RAS error events are kind of uh, given to a, uh, uh, what we ca call as a system uh, satellite management controller or a service management controller. This is system implementation defined. Since ARM um, doesn't manufacture systems, uh, our specification should cater to uh, different system implementations. So uh, the satellite management controller, uh, almost all of our partners do have that. So uh, there needs to be a mechanism to transfer uh, CPR errors, CPR error records to the BMC. So the CPR error records are kind of uh, huge. It, it is in the order of uh, kilobytes. 
So when the satellite management controller receives the CPAP error, error uh, it kind of uh, invokes the, this is the uh, M2 uh, compliant uh, MCTP interface, uh, which I'm describing. Uh, for IPMI, it's, uh, the flow is a little bit different. So what happens is it will uh, invoke uh, event message supported uh, API to the BMC. This event message supported is part of the PLDM spec. And uh, the BMC will return the list of event classes that it supports. So the satellite management controller, based on the list of event classes that are supported, uh, kind of uh, determines, uh, yes, uh, the RAS event is supported. Uh, let me uh, send the size of the error record to the BMC. So Next, it invokes the platform event message, uh, sorry, uh, event message buffer size, which is a standard API, uh, which is defined in PLDM for platform and monitoring sp uh, specification. Uh, this BMC checks for the CPAR size and returns back the maximum communication buffer size uh, that is uh, supported uh, for, the, uh, for the payload. Uh, then the satellite management controller kind of determines whether uh, CPR uh, exceeds the max buffer size. Uh, if it is, then it needs to do a multi-part transfer. So for doing a multi-part transfer using PLDM, uh, there is a standard API, uh, which is platform event message, which kind of sends the... Uh, we don't have this uh, event class yet. This is called, uh, which we are defining. This is RAS poll event, uh, which we kind of plan to uh, propose it to the DMTF to add it in their PLDM for monitoring and uh, control specification. So this uh, RAS poll event, when it goes to the BMC, uh, BMC real realizes that it's a multi-part transfer. And uh, it uh, acknowledges uh, acknowledge the uh, RAS poll event. Then it kind of calls uh, poll for platform event message. A BMC calls poll for platform event message, uh, which uh, with uh, with get first part uh, as a parameter. And the satellite management controller uh, kind of uh, returns. Uh, here is the data for the first part of the message. And uh, BMC keeps on invoking uh, poll for platform event message uh, using the data handle provided uh, uh, with the response from the satellite management management controller. Uh, so finally, once uh, the internal buffers of satellite management controller is empty, it kinds of uh, sends uh, uh, it kinds of sends end. Uh, flag back to the BMC, and the BMC uh, will kind of acknowledge that, uh, saying yes, I received the entire transmission, and the satellite management controller uh, still can check its internal buffer. If everything has been transmitted, it will send back uh, saying uh, start and end, and uh, returning the event ID as uh, uh, null. Okay, so uh, the next sub team, uh, which is basically to kind of uh, monitor different uh, sensors and control them. Uh, so for this, uh, we stop support. I mean, uh, there are different compliance levels which kind of supports IPMI, as well as uh, we plan to support. Uh, MCTP PLDM uh, uh, based mechanism uh, to manage uh, the not just the numeric sensors but as well as the uh, state sensors like uh, uh, firmware uh, progress report codes uh, similar to post codes. Uh, so for this, the sequence diagram is pretty simple. Uh, we plan to use the uh, platform descriptor concept platform descriptor record concept, uh, which is similar to SDR, uh, which is an IPMI. 
uh, this PDRs kind of provide the semantic information. Uh, so the flow kind of looks like I'm just describing the MCTP PLDM uh, flow and uh, IPMI, it is pretty standard, uh, the same standard way uh, which you guys have been using will uh, be using that. Uh, for the so what happens with PLDM is uh, uh, <coughs> assuming that uh, there is a PLDM terminus on the BMC and PLDM terminus on the satellite management controller. Uh, when the satellite management controller kind of uh, boots, uh, it will get its uh, uh, terminus ID and kind of uh, 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 let the BMC know that uh, uh, the terminus is ready to receive commands. And the BMC kind of invokes a standard PLDM command called get PDR uh, repository info. Uh, this basically uh, kind of queries uh, the satellite management controller, give me the information about all the sensors which you kind of have. Uh, this is the use case where uh, the sensors are connected to uh, satellite management controller uh, rather than on the board or directly. So um, the BMC will run the run init agent. Run init agent is basically what it does is uh, in, it looks for the initialization platform descriptor records. Uh, for example, numeric sensor effectors uh, uh, that are associated uh, with the terminal. So for each PDR that is found, uh, it sets the sensor type, sensor thresholds, hysteresis uh, as directed by the PDR, uh, the platform descriptor record, uh, using the set sensor uh, thresholds and the set sensor hysteresis command, uh, which are part of uh, PLDM for platform and monitoring specification. Uh, it may also enable uh, event generation if the sensor supports it. And it may also set the uh, default value, like set numeric sensors. Once uh, the BMC gets the PDRs uh, from the satellite management controller, uh, it kind of creates a central PDR repository, uh, which has information about all the sensors that are uh, kind of controlled by the satellite management controller. So whenever the BMC wants the reading on a particular uh, sensor, it will invoke the get sensor uh, reading uh, by sending the sensor ID. Get sensor reading is also a standard uh, PLDM uh, API or a command. Uh, so the get sensor reading, uh, the response of it would return a binary value, which is uh, kind of uh, in conjunction with the PDR. Uh, the actual value is calculated. Uh, that is, uh, if x is the uh, reading that it got from the sensor, uh, and m is the uh, resolution uh, found in the PDR, and uh, b is the offset uh, in the PDR, then the formula is y equal to uh, m multiplied by x plus b. Uh, for example, if x is like uh, bf and uh, uh, M is like uh, minus, uh, uh, M is like uh, 26.18 uh, millivolt and the offset is minus one volt. Uh, it roughly translate, translates into plus or minus uh, four volt. And the PDR also has uh, additional information about the accuracy and uh, the tolerance. So, uh, this is uh, at a high level uh, what we plan to do uh, using PLDM and uh, MCTP. So the other use case which we are currently kind of working on is the remote debug. Uh, this is basically uh, to debug, a uh, source level debug the SOC uh, using BMC as a, uh, some sort of a pipe where it kind of conveys the commands from the debugger uh, with the debuggers, uh, debug server running on the BMC and using the JTAG to kind of uh, send that commands over to the SOC host and uh, 
letting the user uh, debug it. Uh, the other uh, key objective of this is to ensure that only suitable debuggers can access the SOC. Uh, not everyone can access the uh, source level uh, debugging. OK, uh, yeah, so this is how uh, a remote debug uh, from an ARM-based BMC to an ARM-based uh, SOC looks like. Uh, we'll have uh, uh, at least uh, the present proposal is to have an uh, OpenOCD debug client. OpenOCD is an open source uh, a debugger stack which has support for uh, different uh, ARM debug functions. It also has a ARM um, uh, debug access port driver. So uh, if the open OCD can run on uh, BMC, and it, if it is provided with the SOC configuration uh, using a JTAG driver, which is hardware dependent, uh, in theory, we can access the debug port on the SOC and uh, we'll be able to uh, debug, uh, source level debug the uh, SOC. <clears throat> okay, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we plan to use OpenBMC as a medium to re realize uh, whatever uh, features or specification requirements that we are adding to server-based manageability guide. Um, so ARM and ARM Silicon partners are participating in OpenBMC development at this uh, point in time. So earlier, uh, there was uh, a lot of presentations from on PLDM. Uh, probably we didn't have presentation on MCDP, but uh, Deepak. Uh, I guess is on his team uh, is developing uh, PLDM for OpenBMC, as well uh, Jeremy from IBM is developing MCTP. Uh, so we plan to leverage uh, their work and kind of uh, have a use case for our uh, RAS, uh, which we discussed uh, earlier. So if we translate that uh, sequence diagram into OpenBMC design, it would look something like this. You, ha you would have a RAS daemon or a RAS app um, on the BMC side, which will uh, link with uh, libpldm and libmctp. And on the host, on the SOC host side, uh, we would have a, a libmctp, libpldm libraries as well. Since it's written in C, it's, I guess it's portable. Uh, and on the host side, we would have a RAS driver. Uh, so both of them kind of initializes the both of them kind of initializes the uh, PLDM. Uh, it calls a init API, which is provided by PLDM. Uh, it can either be blocking or an unblocking, uh, and uh, MCTP. Uh, Will also, should also get uh, initialized by calling into MCTP in it. And uh, uh, then there is an MCTP binding in it to specify the physical interface the MCTP should be bound to. And uh, once that happens, uh, it returns back to uh, Raza saying that, uh, uh, yes, I initialized uh, uh, the PLM and MCTP uh, about MCTP endpoint and the PLDM terminus uh, for you. And uh, the same thing happens on the uh, satellite management controller side as well. The RAS driver will have that uh, uh, status uh, with it. So once uh, RAS dr a driver on the satellite management controller, uh, if it either generates a CPR or receives the CPR, uh, it kind of invokes uh, encode uh, PLDM uh, command. Uh, API, which 
which uh, I guess is part of uh, LIP PLDM. And, uh, uh, and the parameters, uh, I mean, uh, I haven't shown all the parameters, but uh, mapping that back to the, uh, the PLDM sequence diagram, uh, it's just, uh, it would be the RAS poll event. And uh, once the PLDM message uh, is constructed, it can be sent using the send message uh, API uh, defined by the uh, MCTP library. And uh, it uh, carries the payload across the uh, physical layer. And the RAS app on the BMC side uh, gets uh, a notification if it has register for it. And uh, once it gets the notification that it has a it has got a request, it would generate a PLDM response, and then send it back uh, the same way uh, using the send message API defined by the libmctp. And since this is a multi-part transfer, uh, then there is a poll for platform event message uh, that needs to be sent uh, to get all the parts of the RAS server record. All right, um, so for uh, platform monitoring and uh, control, uh, we don't have, uh, we are not, we don't have anything at this point, but we soon plan to have a, a design uh, based on the PLDM sequence diagram, uh, which we will be sending it to OpenBMC. But for remote debug, uh, I guess I uh, sent a, a proposal earlier in July, and uh, we completed uh, an internal demo, which is the first part where the uh, GDB uh, client would be running on the uh, user uh, administrator side, uh, connecting to port 333 on the open OCD uh, debug server. Next phase of implementation is to kind of utilize a wrapper uh, which adds uh, JTAG uh, master core infrastructure. Uh, I guess there sh we were looking at uh, some of the patches uh, which were present uh, in OpenBMC. So we are pretty sure that we can reuse uh, one of those and we will provide our own uh, hardware specific driver to connect to this interface. All right. Okay, so this was a roadmap or a plan when we started. So this basically lists uh, uh, platform and monitoring, uh, platform monitoring and control uh, use case, and then uh, a remote firmware upgrade, uh, which we haven't embarked yet and then we have uh, a bmc ras errors uh, implementation which we are at a stage where we think we can contribute to open bmc on this and uh, the other use case was the remote debug capability this also we are at a stage we, where we can contribute to uh, open bmc So these are the uh, list of uh, things uh, that would be beneficial uh, in order to realize uh, SPMG uh, and an implementation based on SPMG. <laughs> so we are participating in OpenBMC to enable reference implementation. And uh, we are participating in OCP as well uh, to influence hardware management specifications and design. Uh, we are participating in uh, DMTF work groups. Uh, in case you guys are interested uh, to be part of uh, this specification, uh, send an email to ARM and uh, we can add you. All right. All right, that's it I had. Thank you. Any questions I can take? So uh, 
do you have anything like a serial over LAN or any, how do you see that host console from the DMC? So basically the management port, uh, yeah, it's the level M1 kind of supports IPMI serial over LAN uh, uh, implementation. Hey, so I'm curious for the remote debug, were you able to do some um, <clears throat> performance profiling to see like what kind of performance do you get for this um, this uh, debug over network? Uh, if you are talking about scaling, uh, we are not yet at that stage where we can measure the performance. Uh, okay. But, uh, but you have the a single okay. post, uh, it's seamless for the network. So that if I were to do like a set a breakpoint or a memory dump, this is something that can be complete relatively quickly. It will not. Yeah, since it's a JTAG interface, it's uh, just limited by the JTAG interface uh, speed. Oh, I see. So it doesn't require much cycle from BMC and a network site as well. Uh, it would require uh, some cycles from the BMC because uh, the open OCD debug server is running on it. Yeah, but exactly. it just acts as a pipe. Uh, and the payload is very small. Uh, okay. kind so the main of bottleneck is still JTAG. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks. Any other questions? So I'm assuming all the sensors data and everything you will be expecting as a part of that uh, PLDM package uh, from the host, uh, whatever you expected. One of the methods is the platform descriptor records. Other is the sensor SDRs uh, defined in IPM. And uh, is there anything you would be thinking of a fan controller or are you going to have in the design? PWM tag. tag. Yeah, uh, so we kind of uh, defer that to how the OCP specification specifies it. So you do you expect BMC to control the file? Yes. Thanks. Right. Thank you.